Okay, so I already posted a series about how to make a multiple choice quiz game, and it was entirely text based. So the questions would be text and the answers would be text. And the most common request I had is, well, can you replace the text answers with flashcards, like something you'd show like a little kid? So the question would be cat and then the answers would be pictures and one of them would be a picture of a cat and they have to click on it. The problem with that is that the way the information is stored is entirely different. For the text-based questions, you really have what's known as a list variable or a series of list variables storing the different possible answers. Whereas with a flashcard, you have a series of variables, each one storing a different picture. And the way you access that would be entirely different. So since it was such a large difference from one to the other, I realized I couldn't just thumbnail it into a single video and say, OK, here's how it works. I realized that it would really take a whole new series uh, to properly uh, do flashcards. And this is just one way. Uh, there's other ways you could do this. And like I've said in the past, I'm not here to show you the best way because that's a very subjective term. I'm here really to show you the way that is probably the easiest to understand so as to teach you how to do this. You can then build on what I did and make something better. So uh, I created a new project and you just choose 2D and this is what you see. Now what I have is in an external folder, I have 16 pictures. Now I've mentioned in other videos about importing uh, images and importing resources, it says easy, as selecting it from the external folder and then you just drag and drop them. That's all it takes to import uh, images. Now, since this is in a 2D environment, these automatically uh, default to sprites. So if you click on it, you know, come over here in the, inspect in the inspector, you'll see texture type sprite. The reason why I mention this is if you choose to do it in a 3D environment, things default as texture and then you'd have to change it to sprite if you want to use it for this purpose. Okay, so it's that easy to get images. Now obviously uh, someone would have to take the time to draw these, so I don't want to say this is misleading, but uh, images don't just exist. You would need to make sure that you have the rights to them and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a question at the top and then we're going to have three images. Maybe they're going to be horizontal, maybe they're going to be vertical. The actual alignment has no impact on functionality. Functionality has to do with uh, the object itself, not positioning on the screen. So whether you want to align them vertically or horizontally is irrelevant. It's more a matter of aesthetics. So what are we going to do? We are going to have a text object along the top. And then we're going to have three separate objects. Those objects are going to have a script attached to them. And that script is going to create variables and each image will be stored in a variable. So first, let's start with the question at the top. So we're going to go to game object and we're going to go to create empty. And we're going to call this question text. We click on that. We click on add component. So if, if you haven't done anything in Unity before, when you click on an object here, the inspector is over here and the inspector shows you the various components that are part of that object and you can modify um, those components. You can, like, for instance, you can change the position, rotation, scale, things like that. So add component. I'm going to do um, mesh, text mesh, and we're going to do a few things. First, we're going to type test. You can see it's blurry. So to take care of that, you need to change character size. Change it to like 0.2. And let's give it, choose a font, Arial. And let's give it a font size. Let's see how 48 looks. 
Now, this is important because depending on how, if you're looking at something for maybe toddlers or really young kids, you may want just have one word questions, maybe not full sentences, maybe just a single word. And so that changes a few things. So if you want this centered at the top, okay, see where it says anchor? Well, it starts in the upper left, which means this right here is the anchor. So if you type, it pushes out this way. Watch. See, this isn't moving. It's pushing out because the anchor is the upper left. Now let's change this. Watch what happens when we say anchor is middle center. Let's center it again. And now we do this again. Now it's pushing out to the left and the right. It's splitting the difference. It's not just pushing in one direction. So if you're looking to make sure that this is really centered and that kind of thing, it makes a difference as to whether or not you're going to do uh, a, an anchor of the left or an anchor in the middle. So like, for instance, if this is a simple word, you're probably going to want to anchor in the middle. So whether it says cat, dog, rocket, whatever, it will always be centered. Whereas if you have it anchored to the left, that's really if you're going to have it over here and you're going to have like a full sentence. Okay. Now, before I go any further, the more proper way would be to use UI objects. And I've been uh, told in the past that really text mesh is being de deprecated. Again, this is not meant to be the best way. This is meant to be a very simple, straightforward way. Also makes it very easy to access these components. And in a 2D game, honestly, a UI level is really kind of irrelevant. In a 3D game, UI level is very important because it needs to overlay the 3D world. But in a 2D game, it's easy enough to make something overlay everything else. So, we now have the text at the top. Now we're going to have to create three objects and then attach these images to it. So game object, create empty, and we'll call this choice one. Actually, let's just create one for the moment and then I can just copy it. So we have an object with really almost no components, just a transform component. So it has position and not much of anything else. Well, just as we had to add a text mesh to this, so as you can see it, we're going to add what's known as a sprite renderer. So add component, rendering, and then we're going to do sprite renderer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a script. So I'm sorry if it seems like I'm kind of jumping around. Unfortunately, it's a very simple game. And so there's only just so far you can go. And then you really have to get into the next functionality. So right click, create, C sharp. And we're going to name it. We're going to call this image con, short for image control. We click on choice one and we put image con onto it. So the script is now a component of that object. That script is basically empty. So if you click on it or double click on it, it'll open it up. Hold control and scroll the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in. And you'll see a few things. Don't worry about this for the moment. You have a start section. This executes when the object that the script is attached to is created. In this case, the object is going to be created as soon as the um, 
scene is created. And the update, so this gets run just once when the object is created. This gets run over and over again. How often? Once per frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some variables. So public sprite image one public sprite image two public sprite image three public sprite image four so there are so we have 18 objects so there's going to be and we're going to use three uh, there are 18 images and there's going to be three objects so that means each one needs six public sprite image five public sprite image six so basically what you're saying is the type of the variable is going to be a sprite and this is the name of the variable since it's a sprite it's going to be looking for what sprite that variable is going to store so save this go ahead click on choice one and there you go. Since the script is attached to this object, these variables are now attached to this object. And now it's just a matter of drag and drop, and you can drag and drop whatever you want. So we'll put the B, the first one, the burger on the second one, cactus on the third one, cake on the fourth one, cannon on the fifth one, door on the sixth one. Now, getting kind of ahead of myself, but these are fairly random. You could make categories if you want. So if you're doing food categories, then you probably wouldn't do, you know, insects and, and uh, hammers. You would just do food objects. So kind of thinking ahead, you could do categories. I'm not going to bother at this point. Okay, so we have an object that has a sprite renderer, and we've stored a whole bunch of images as sprites. Now, I said we need three. So let's move this one over. Now, you can't see it because there's no default image yet. We'll copy and we'll paste. We'll rename this one Choice 2. Move it down. Move this one up. Now, if you notice, it copied all the images. Now, no big deal. You can just replace these. Each one is independent. So even though this is called image 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and this is called image 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, they're actually entirely different variables. They are not the same variable, even though they have the same name. They are not what's known as static variables. Okay, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna start with Dragonfly, Dynamite, Flower, Fries, Hammer, and Muffin. Copy, paste, Move it down. Again, choice three. And now we start with the save. So safe, salt, shrooms, spider, sword, and umbrella. So now, those three objects now each have six images assigned to each one. And I think we're going to stop there because I don't want to go too far in just one video. 
But what you've done now is you've created your uh, text at the top and the three images here. And what's going to happen is in the next video, we're going to show how to click on them to make them clickable. And we're also going to show you how to start cycling through those images. So that should do it for this first one.